Welcome to the Biz for Good Show, where we highlight misfits, outcasts, and renegades for the being good and doing good movement. We spotlight people that are changing the world by having integrity and honesty and creating an environment of connection, thus showing the true secret to success and creating a life of greater impact. So come on board and create your own Biz for Good life. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Biz for Good Show! Welcome, people. I'm your host, Bobby Glenn James, along with the Ryan Pilkington! Ryan Pilkington, ladies and gentlemen, and of course, today, an amazing guest. Tell us about the show, Ryan! Yeah! <laughs> Ryan has gotten a lot more loud and boisterous since before we started the show, haven't you? Yeah, something rubbed off on me. <laughs> I don't know what it was. But yeah, thanks for joining us for the Biz for Good show. And then we're on episode 103, Becoming an Influencer, Power Player for Good with Tracy Hazard. Becoming an Influencer, Power Player for Good with Tracy Hazard. Welcome to the Draw Show, Tracy. Thanks, guys, for having me. Oh, my goodness. I love the energy. <laughs> this is going to be a fun interview. We've, 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 she's, she's sat with us so nice and patiently while we have out all these technical, technical problems, and she's just super fun. So this is going to be a great. Thanks for being on the show, Tracy, and let's kick it. Kick it. Kick it. Absolutely. So, yeah, we hit one episode over 100, and now we got to relearn our technical stuff. you got to learn. Yeah, yeah. It, hey, it's always. That's the whole thing of business, the whole thing of everything that you do. You've always got to keep moving forward, doing something more. And, hey, yeah, you get problems. You have things that happen, and that's what helps you grow. I mean, everybody, people are afraid to move forward because they're afraid stuff will go wrong. But you know what? That's what pushes us to do more. Those are, that's the difference between people that sit on the couch and people that are successful. And that's why I reached out to you, because you are a doer, my I'm friend. I'm a doer, yes. I believe that the true secret to success, success is one word with two letters, D-O. D-O. If you want to get somewhere in life, do something. Oh, uh, I agree. You, you, you agree with that, Tracy? Yeah, I believe in doers. Oh, action is the key. You, we talk to so many highly successful people, and it always comes down to they work. <laughs> It takes work, man. It takes work. <laughs> awesome. Okay. Yeah, well, you know, I re I talk about uh, this all the time that I see great ideas. I see, you know, great passionate plans. I see um, products that are really cool, but, you know, 99% of them won't do it. They no implementation. They don't. Or... They don't stick with it long enough. Those are those are the highly successful people are the ones that everybody said that's stupid. It'll never work. And they didn't quit. Elon Musk comes to mind. An electric car. Yeah. What in the crap are you thinking? <laughs> and let's put it in space. <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> Tell us about the show, Ryan. Okay. We, yeah. we, we got all the getting off track, yeah. off track done. I plan on it every time. <laughs> All right, yeah, we got Tracy Hazard, and uh, she is an ink columnist and a uh, co-host of the Three Top Rank podcast, Feed Your Brand, uh, just listed as one of the CIO's top 26 entrepreneur podcasts to listen to in 2018, the newly launched members only product launch hazards, and what the F, no, it's WTFFF, and uh, the 3D print innovation start point featured as one of the exclusive live podcasts at the SXSW in 2018, with a constant stream of content and products from her authority platform reaching over 100,000 listeners and viewers each month, Tracy influences and cast branded content in 2 billion, that's a billion worth of... That's a B, people. Yeah. Worth of consumer products and innovation around the world. This is the real deal, ladies and gentlemen. Tracy has it. 
Welcome, welcome, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Biz for Good Show. Two fun, adventurous entrepreneurs sharing the experiences of the real secret to success in business, doing all things with a be good, do good mindset. There is so much bad noise in the world. Let's fight against the noise by flooding the world with the good. Get us on Insta, Instagram, Instagramians, Facebookians. Twitterans, Twitterites, and uh, check us out. Subscribe uh, on iTunes and all those other great places. Uh, Biz for Good Show is not just a podcast. It's a movement. That is correct. It is a movement. We are here for the good. Take it on. Good against the noise. Good against the noise. Yeah, definitely go on Instagram and share your good stories using the hashtag good against the noise. Very good. And then uh, there's this this thing that we oh, just love to talk about. Yes, builderall. Builderall2millions.com. Builderall to millions. We've all heard of all those different sales funnel programs and all those different things out there for creating ways to get clients to you and all that stuff. Builderall to millions.com is the place to go. For all of the cool stuff, you build instant websites. You can build hundreds of different sales funnels and all that. It, you can make your own phone apps. Uh, there, webinars, all of it is in one place. Instead of having all of the different pieces and parts, no longer do you need a mail, mail program because it's in Builderall. All of it is in Builderall. Builderall to millions.com. Be sure to click on the affiliate link if you want to become an affiliate. But what I like about it is you can just click and create and to drag. You don't have to do any coding. Yes. Unless you know HTML or whatever. It's but called it's, a WuzzyWig. What you see is what you get. And you drop it. It's like using, if you can use Word, you can create a, word, a, a website. Yeah. So we love it. We love it. Check it out. Okay. Something new that we are going to do today on the show is we are going to highlight, we're going to start highlighting me and Ryan's kind of. Uh, we want to start giving action items for folks that, that we have done, that we have learned. And Ryan, of course, being the, the, the guru graphic man that he is, I, I tell everybody I meet, Ryan is a graphical genius, but he just understands branding. You understand how to look at a company. You, 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 and when you do graphic stuff for companies, you, you sit down with them and you find out their core and what they are. And then you create this brand for them that's just, um, I mean, I've seen it over and over again. I know we got graphic stuff all over the studio, and it's all Ryan. <laughs> it's all Ryan. Thank you. Uh, you just understand how to pull out this brand of a company that, that I just think there's not many people that, that have companies that can do that for people. So we're going to start highlighting that and talking to Ryan about branding for good. So what do you got for us today about branding for good? Yeah, thank you. George! Oh, playing fun here. Um, yeah, we got Branding for Good is a segment, and I'm glad that we have a guest here because she can bounce off of this better as well as with me. But uh, it's called Two Sides to Every Brand. We got the business and the personal side of branding, and I wanted to talk specifically about the perception versus reality. Aha. So you get your website up, and you think it's looking awesome, and you're like, this is what my company is. But then when they call you, and then you're interacting with customers, is it re even relating to what's on your website or on your branding material? Ooh, so, consistency. Uh, consistency and perception. Brand. So I would say take some time and do some art brand archetyping and understanding your brand personalities so it relates to what your brand is and what your target audience is. And then make sure your company is that. Exactly. <laughs> I used to love it. We'd go to networking meetings. I'm sure Tracy's probably had this too. You go to a networking meeting and this person is like, yeah, I'm a, I'm a marketing expert. And they give you like a cutout business card that has fringes on it that they probably made on their printer. And it's just like, I'm sorry. And, and it's a Gmail account, email. And you're just like, I, it doesn't feel... Right. And, and whether you like it or not, you are your brand. Exactly. Period. I'll go to a lot of net networking meetings, and I get their business cards, and it's sad because they miss an opportunity to look right. It's like they give me a piece of paper from they just got off of their printer, and I'm like, 
you missed the boat. Yep. Yeah. What do you think, Tracy? Yeah, you know, I mean, I am a big proponent of what I call hypothesis brands at the very beginning when you aren't really sure who you are or what, how people are going to perceive you because at the end of the day, branding really is what people think of you. That's your brand. It is not what you put out in the world. It is how it's perceived, how it's received. Yep. And so at the end of the day, if it's being received badly, then you've done something wrong. Ooh. And so having something where you get started to have that dialogue, because a lot of people get stuck when they're first beginning and they don't put themselves out there because they're afraid of, oh, if I print this, I got to print up a thousand and, you know, it's expensive. And like they get caught up in that. And, and I'm a big fan of putting a stake in the ground, just getting out there with what you believe you truly believe you are and where the value lies, the most unique value, of course. And then from there, letting it go to have a dialogue back and forth, start to find out what people actually think of you. So, I mean, I, our, our brand has shifted multiple times over time because the more we converse with our customers, the more we realized we were not what we thought we were. And so that's okay. Go ahead and shift, go ahead and move, go ahead and make it what people are seeing and then live by that. And then that that is the key. And then live by that. That is. And that's I love what you said, business and personal, because, again, what your personal life is still your brand. And if it doesn't connect with your business, people are going to know that in this day and age, they are together, whether we like it or not. (laughs) Awesome. Well, Well, and today we can't divorce that because today we're all out there, right? We're all doing our live streams and we're out there, you know, talking about it. So at the end of the day, your brand is you too. And how you are received, if you're received in a really valuable way, in a good way, an open-minded way, then then it makes a difference. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thanks so much. Let's get to know you. We let's let's uh, we we want um, let's just get to know Tracy. Can you, you got any any juicy stuff for us so we can really go? Yeah, Are you trying to go for Tracy. gossip? Or? Well, no, no, no. no, no, no. I think no. she that thing that's in her head right now that she goes, I'm not sure. I want to say that's the one we want. That one right there. <laughs> <laughs> well, so I'll tell you. I'll tell you what fascinates people the most. I work with my husband, and I've worked with my husband for almost 25 years. Oh. What? Wow. wow. Yep. So he's my he is my partner and that fascinates people. They cannot believe that we've worked together. We, we and on and off. I mean, not solidly had a business together for 25 years, but we've solidly had this business together for almost 10. So, you know, this the, this formation wow. of our business we've had for almost 10 together. And people can't understand how we can do that. It's like it blows their mind. I love But it. not just that, we we added our uh 23 year old daughter to our business and she <laughs> killed it. She accelerated us a year beyond what we expected to be able to do. No so way. now we have a real family business. <laughs> you have a 23 year old daughter. Yeah. I don't, I don't believe you. I don't, I don't that, that's know. the other thing that blows most people's mind. Yeah. Yes. But I also have a nine year old and a four year old. We have oh a fact gosh. checker. Around here. Yeah. That with wow. the same husband, right? With the same <laughs> husband. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm proud of making it 23 years. And my wife won't have anything to do with work that I do. <laughs> and, and that's the way it is for a lot of people, right? Would yeah. You, would you say that yeah. you're, you're best friends, right? Yeah. I, I, you know, we started out as best friends before we started dating. Um, and, um, you know, we, we, we went to art school. Both of us went to Rhode Island School of Design together. And so we met, you know, in that environment. And we truly found our skills compatible. And we would used to do projects together and critique each other's work. And, um, and we found we were better together. And Man, so it's so really cool. an you know, this is something that's really amazing for um, when you experience it. And if you can get that and you get a partner. And so it doesn't matter if you're married or not. But if you can get a partner in where your mind share becomes bigger than you, mm. that's amazing. And, and it's and it's great. And so most people are like, well, how do you how do you have time off? How do you you know, how do you get a date night or whatever? And we are like, well, we never actually shut it off. That's something we learned early on. We never shut off the creative process or talking about business. We don't have a like, you can't talk about it after five o'clock or anything. Our daughters get a little upset at us sometimes. But (laughs) because 
because our minds are working in the creative process and the way that we work, mm. that doesn't shut off in our own heads. So we've just learned to say, hey, it's OK. Well, you know, go for it and mention it to me. And if I'm like, no, I, I can't I handle one more thing today. I'm on overload. Then, it, you know, we'll we'll stop talking to you about it and we'll, we'll put it off to a better time. But for the most part, we just don't create that hard and fast line. And it's actually made our our whole work and home life a lot easier for I us. I think that's, you know, people talk about don't bring your work home. But you guys are, it's a part of you. And, and it really is. It is. It's a part of us. Yeah. yeah. I, I love that. I love, I, I think that's kind of going against the grain, but a good thing. I, I, I super think that if you, if you can, and it's cool that you, you found a partner that can, can be with you all the time. And, and that's the way I feel about my wife. We don't ever get tired of each other or I don't ever need man breaks or, or stuff. And I know a lot of people that do. And I, I don't know. I, I I like being with my wife. <laughs> I, I I you know I don't want to well, ever. Not I mean that's be the thing her. is we don't we don't have the same job, so it's like you know we still talk about like what did you who'd you talk to today and what'd you do today? Like are we still because I mean our jobs are not the same job, so you know it still is that way for us, and we still have those conversations. Super cool. Yeah. Super super. Cool. I worked with my wife at a call center. And everyone asked, what the heck? You guys go on the same shift every day and see each other every day. You're home. And went, yeah, we don't have a problem. And like I said, we were best friends first. So, Yep. Yep. I, it makes, it, well, you know, it's good to hear that we still have people that stay married. Because you watch the news, you would think nobody ever <laughs> stays married. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, there you go. But the other thing is that when you're building something that's passion based or or a business that is big, right, um, you're kind of in so enveloped in that world, right? You're immersed in it. And it's really hard to then make family time and come out of that and, and have a relationship. And that's why so many people who build big businesses end up without their relationships at the end of the day. Yeah. But we are on the same path. We're building the same business together. We have the same heartfelt goals. We want to make the world better. You know, like we have that and our mind share and our, our time share is the same. And so it just cool. those that alignment really makes a difference. You know that awesome. reminds me. We we had the CEO of Crazy Richard's Peanut Butter on, and and if you've never had Crazy Richard's Peanut, have you ever heard of it? It's it's a national brand. I haven't, it's, but it sounds it's, good. <laughs> oh, it's super natural. It's all hundred percent natural peanut butter. She was so amazing, but she she bought the company from her dad. She grew up running around in the in the warehouse that you can't do now because of all these restrictions. But <laughs> and then she hires her husband. And he's allergic to peanuts, which is so cool. But but anyway, the fact that it's the same thing. It seems like people that are really focused on this being good and doing good stuff, uh, we, relationships matter. And, and they're important. And, and even those really, really close relationships like spouses. And it's, it's, it's kind of cool. It's kind of cool to see that that's still a thing. Awesome. Well, let's let's we we have asked Tracy and she has accepted the Google challenge. <laughs> that is right. Tracy has decided to take on Google and it is going to be brutal. So, ladies and gentlemen, Ryan is going to be putting in the question to Google right now. The question is becoming an influencer, power player for good. Now we're going to go to page three of Google it's because page one and two is not fun. We're going to go to page three <laughs> and we're going to find out what Google has to say about this. And we'll see what Tracy has to say, what Google has to say. What is impact and influence is what Google is saying. Impact and influence as a competency is the ability to persuade or convince others to support an idea, agenda or direction. Sometimes we refer to it as strategic influence. It involves taking a variety of actions to influence others, including establishing credibility or using data to directly persuade or address a person's issues or concerns. <sighs> what do you think, Tracy? I think that sounds a little manipulative. Ooh, oh. She took it on. Don't, don't you? Oh, yeah. <laughs> don't you? I mean, I think it... While I was reading it, I it felt does. that way. I mean, it sounds like the digital marketer definition of influencer. 
like it sounds like the ones who are using Google Trends and using Google to, oh. you know, figure out how to make their stuff rank and how to get above everybody else. That's what that sounds like. And to me, that's not a true influencer. I mean, while those influencers do make money, they make money in really unscrupulous ways at the end of the day where the products aren't any good and they're just hawking yeah. stuff. And it's about money and it's not about impact, which was the first word that they said there. Mm. So I, I always think that impact means that, you know, you want to do something bigger and better for the world. You want to have impact and ripples that go throughout. And if you're going to do that, then it has to be authentic at the end of the day. Absolutely. So while, while you can use those tools and you should use those tools because that's what you're competing against. But at the end of the day, it's got to be authentic to you. And that's what a true influencer is. It, it, I, we have tons of influencers on our, on our platform, on our podcast platform that we utilize. And when I look at the ones that do the best, they're the ones that are the most authentic. They're the ones that yep. are the most them every single day in and out. And they're not the ones that are doing the tools. Yep. We, we, we say the only true way to get above the noise is be yourself because it's the only thing you have that is a real differentiator because everybody else knows about all those tools. The only way you can become above that is to be who you are and, and the people that will connect with that will connect with that. I love it. That is so cool that this came up and that you were able to take that on <laughs> because often we get people that agree with Google, but I think, I think you are right on the money. Super cool, yeah. which brings us in to another piece of being good is being real and authentic to the people that you connect with. And sincere. Be sincere. What? Sincere. Be sincere. Yes, yeah. absolutely. And in this day and age, we know when somebody's full of crap. You, you, while I was reading it, I felt it. While you heard it, you felt it. We all were like, oh, my gosh, this is so right on the money with every, what everybody tells you you should do. And it has no soul. It has no good yeah. energy. So interesting. Very cool. Awesome. It does have some other things on there, but we'll move on. It does have some other things, but we might taint all the cool stuff we just came up with <laughs> if they start going on a good path. <laughs> yeah. So move it on. <laughs> Let's go on. <laughs> all right. So um, the question for you to now, yeah, I can't talk. Tracy is, what is uh, what's going on? What's your movement? What's going on with Tracy? Well, so I have two businesses that I run. And so um, one is a product-based business and one is a content-based business. And the reality is, is to sell great products, to sell the best peanut butter, um, to sell the, you know, the best juicer blender out on the market today. In order to do that, you have to have great content. And so a That's lot so of people true. do these influencer campaigns where they go find a celebrity, they get Kim Kardashian or whoever to hawk their stuff. It's expensive <laughs> and it's actually not as useful because they're going to move on to the next thing, you know, and so the next day, the, the day you can. Yeah, it's 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 it doesn't last. And so how can you become the influencer? How can you become a part of the movement? So if you are making the most amazing juicer blender and you are passionate about, um, you know, juicing as as the absolute, you know, most healthy way to go through your life, then you should be the one talking about that. You should be the one who builds that influence and that, that community around it. So we have, you know, that's that's kind of what we sort of fell into. So I'd been designing products for mass market for 20, 25 plus years. So things that you buy at Costco and Walmart and Target every single day, I ghost design for Martha Stewart and people like that. So you have bought my products. But the reality is, is that when I went to go work with smaller companies and smaller brands who didn't get on that mass market level, they didn't have the capacity to advertise, to get the positioning, to do all of those mm -hmm. things at the get go. They had to build mm -hmm. that. Yes. And the only way to do that was to to go from the beginning and build this sort of influencer style campaign, because otherwise they would get a bunch of product and it would be sitting in the garage. They'd have 10,000 units you know, of something and that you spend too much money making product. And that's so risky when you don't know if people will buy it yet. I have a question. And there was no way for them to test it. I have a, I have a question. Uh, uh, we got. I went to Walmart during that crazy Black Friday. That crazy. Really, you tried that, huh? No, we we went on accident. It was it was not an accident. Trust me. Oops, anyway, there's a billion yeah. people here. <laughs> you accidentally showed up at Walmart on Black it, Friday. It, it is a long, <laughs> long story. It involves a. Duct tape. Anyways, 
<laughs> we won't go into that. Uh, anyway, uh, the question is, I saw a lot of people getting the quick pot. The quick pot. And it seems like, is there any influencing going on? Because all these, it seems like mom bloggers are going crazy on this quick pot thing. And it looks like a, a yeah, rice you know, cooker. Yeah, you know, it, it, there's, there's so much of this that is just such push marketing, and it's to get people into the store. So yeah. here I am. I know I'm an insider into what goes on in the retail, and I wouldn't step a foot in or buy a Black Friday sale <laughs> ever. Um, there and, it is, people. And, Been saying yeah, that for years. Because... Yeah, because because it's what they call, you know, a lot of the product is lost leaders. So mm -hmm. these are things that they bring in. They don't make any money on it. Um, it's defeatured. So it's actually not the top value product that you want. And their goal is to get you in the door so you'll buy a bunch of other things and then they'll make back their money. And yeah. that's how you hit the black on Black Friday yeah. and Cyber Monday. And they're all the same kind of things. But today it's a pay per play model. So only the people that can play, only the pay, only the people that can advertise, only the people who agree to be a part of the sales and discount more so Amazon makes more. Mm. That's the people who are doing that. So are those products any good? Most of the people who have amazing good products can't afford to do that. And yeah. so you're missing out on really great messaging, great mission driven products, really great inventors behind them or founders behind them like your like the peanut butter you know like you're really missing out on that if you're going straight into this what is manipulative marketing at the end of the day it is driving you into to do more and buy more and it's about consumerism and it's not really about what's best and what's the best gift going out there and so what's best for your family now that being said if there happens to be a toy that your kid absolutely wants and it happens to be on sale you should get the discount go for it <laughs> yeah. there you go so what because it'll be gone <laughs> so how, take us through what it looks like for maybe a, a, a potential client of yours what would that look like because you're, i think you're striking it right on the head most of our listeners are small business uh, owners and solopreneurs and stuff like that what would what do you do for people like that to get them to even compete in any kind of a way uh, could you give us just a little bit of insight Right. So what I want them to do is to start first without product. And when I define product, it could be a coaching package. It could be a course. It could be a book. It's I want you to start first on what we call the platform for your social good business. I want you to start on that platform building first, hey, because if you don't have the, the right figure? audience. Yeah, because if you don't have the right audience, you don't have the right type of people to talk to and you don't know if they will plunk down money at the end of the day for what you might have to sell in the future, mm -hmm. then you're not really testing it. You're testing it with friends and family who love you and they're either going to be yes men or no men. And so the, we're the ones who say, yes, of course, everything you do is amazing, Bobby and Ryan, right? You know, you guys are, you <laughs> know, you guys mom. are the bomb, right? <laughs> That's your mom, right? But then you might have your dad who goes back and goes, no, no you shouldn't do this. Like, go get a job, <laughs> right? So those are the ones Dead. Where no matter what it is, it's yes or no, but it's coming from a place of love for you and protecting yeah. you. you can't and it has nothing to do with the idea or mm -hmm. the social good mission of that you have. <laughs> as much as we love those folks, uh, <laughs> the insight we, we probably need from, from outside. And getting out got, yeah, yeah. doors. Exactly. And then today, if you've got a consumer product, you better know that women want it. Like that's at the end of the day, you better find a way to access women because women control 86% of the purchases oh, wow. that are made at, at retail. They either buy or actually influence the decision. That's and that's across every product category. And yeah. it's even higher on things like travel. So services too. It's, it's just crazy numbers. So if you don't have a community of women, this is why I'm not a Kickstarter fan because Kickstarter is 70% millennial male oh, with no money oh. dude we need so, to come up with a female a thing a female kickstarter <laughs> <laughs> well there there are some but they don't work as well either Th oh. that's what amazon is right, uh, right. <laughs> yeah. oh, wow. amazon everything so, so if you can find a way to test your idea with by building this community and getting the right people so again this is where i go back to what i said at the beginning which was a hypothesis because you don't necessarily want to spend a ton of money developing your brand you don't want to develop a whole gigantic, like overcomplicated website. You don't want to build it yet. You want to just have something simple where you can start to have a conversation. And then the next step is to have some conversion, to have some, can I sell them something that 
they buy. So I know that my, that they, they care about my mission and they will buy something because of it. And you want it to be something, you know, relevant, obviously you don't want to go for that, but it may not be that final invention or that final course or the final thing. It may just be something small. Maybe it's a Love book it. and maybe it's a, you know, a, a, a small one day boot camp, you know, it could be something like that. So, like, um, we do a lot of, that's why we started 3d printing. Cause we do a lot of small run test products before we actually make 10,000 piece runs. Wow. Yeah. I love it. I love it. Do we want to, let's ask the question, our big question. I think this connects us with, um, our big question of the day, which we ask everybody that, that comes on the show. What does biz for good mean to you? What does being good and doing good uh, in business mean to you? So what I found is that I am a, I'm going to call it a, I, I'm a conduit for great ideas. And, and I can, when you, when you tell me your mission and your ideas or you give me your product, um, it, it, you know, I look at it and I go, there's a path for this or there's, or this is a dead end. <laughs> and it's just something I have. It's a gift. I, I, I truly see it as that. It's my, it's it, intuition based. But when I look at that, I go, what can I do most, I can get people to figure out what those actions are that they can take. I can get their path for them to get it to market fastest, to get their, their message out there, to get their voice out there. I can build that for them or I can show them how to, how to guide along that in the fastest way possible because today it's a speed to market issue. You know, you gotta be, you don't have to be first out there, but you have to be fast. Um, and so how can you get out there and what are those stages along the way where you're spending as little money as possible, but you're constantly scaling up that test? Oh, they want this. Okay. Now I can do the next thing. Now I can add the next thing. Okay. Now I'm ready to make this product. Now I'm ready to put a shop on my, on my website. Now I'm ready to do these things. Now I'm ready to take advertisers on my podcast, whatever it might be. How can I build it in a way that it grows my movement? So my biz for good is that I can grow other people's businesses. I can mm -hmm. give them those tools, the path, the fastest way to make that happen for them. And because I can the tell more you, people they help, the more impact. You have a little bit of a passion behind it, it sounds like. It, it feels <laughs> like do. maybe tiny, you dude. really enjoy assisting other people. It feels like that. I'm just saying. This is off the hip. I do. We were talking about doers before, right? Mm -hmm. And, you know, this is the thing. I know how to do stuff. <laughs> I'm a how-to girl. I've got it covered. And so many people don't understand that and they get overwhelmed by uh -huh. that. And what do I do? How do I do it? And to me, that is just simple. And yeah. so when I can just bring that and plug it all in for someone and say, this is the easiest, fastest way to do it. And if I can make it as cheap as possible for you too, I will do that. that and so cool. like, that's my ultimate goal. That's, that's so outwardly focused. You're not, you're not taking a gift that you have and then just using it. You're actually using it for good, not abusing it, but using it. Yes. You know what I mean? And, the, and, and money flows when you do that. When you find that connection of, of your thing that can really assist people. I mean, there's so many people out there with business models that, that when it comes down to it, it really doesn't assist that many people, really. But when you have something, the money really will flow. And that, that's our big mantra is that it's not about the money, but the money comes when it's not about the money. Yeah. Oh, I so agree with that. That is exactly it. Well, we don't measure our revenue. We measure our referrals. Mm. And so if our, and so, and we actually reward that way too. So I, so I mentioned I have two businesses. So I have the product business, but I have a podcast platform. So where we grow podcasters and on that podcast platform, if someone refers someone to us, we give them five free episodes. And wow. so we reward them with production for their for their show. And so I have some I have some who've never paid for for production. Wow. And so and, and rather than write a five hundred dollar check, I give them five episodes. And so they love that more. Oh, and absolutely. for us, it, it's yeah. So we have never paid for advertising for our business in the last two years of the current formation of it. And, um, and because it all comes from referrals and we have, we, have, we've been scaling up on a really consistent basis on that. It's so cool. Wow. So cool. Well, thank you so much for being on the show, Tracy. You're, you're a powerhouse. We can, we can tell that just being around you, that you're a powerhouse, not only the fact that you're, 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 uh, what do you call it? The thing 
your bio says all of the amazing stuff that you've done. But but just being around you, just for the hour that we've been around you, what an amazing person that epitomizes what being good and doing good really is and lives it. That, that the key is to live being that way and it's power thank you so much for being on the show how can people get a hold of you how can they connect with you how do we find you guys so so the businesses are has design has design.com and if you really want to check it out check out the podcast product launch hazards if you're an inventor um and that's hazards with putting that in my my podcast list (laughs) i'm absolutely putting that in my podcast list subscribe yeah and uh and then the other one is feed your brand so if you're truly on the service side and the podcaster side feed your brand is for you oh that is so cool feed your brand.com feed your brand.co Feedyourbrand.co. Awesome, awesome. This has been amazing. Tracy is a powerhouse. We want to leave people wanting more. So, uh, Tracy, thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thanks so much. Thank you both. We like to leave the show a little crazy. So, Ryan, you want to take that over? (laughs) Thanks, Tracy, for being on the Biz for Good show. I've learned so much from you, and we hope to have you back on the show soon. And uh, we always leave the show with the hashtag be good, do good three times on the third time. Bobby and everybody goes crazy. So including Cedric, Cedric, sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do this, Ryan. All right. All right. Hashtag be, be good, good, do good. good. Hashtag be good, do good. Hashtag be good, do good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. (laughs) And that's a wrap. Thank you for listening to the Biz for Good Show podcast. We want to thank all our fans and guests on the show. Be sure to check us out on all our social media platforms, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. For your hosts, Bobby Glenn James and Ryan Pilkington, this is Tim Jackson saying get out and do some good. Now go. Go.